Mario from Mario H Fab. Today's video is going to be um, some tips for welding around tubes. If you're going to get into roll cage fabrication or any kind of tube work, bike frames or anything. Um, so there's just some tips on preparing the uh, notches and some tips for the welding as well. Right, so what I've got here is some inch and three quarter seamless CDS some off cuts that I've cut with a tube notcher which if you're going to do any amount of this kind of work um, I'd recommend you get a tube notcher you can get them really cheap and they're just going to save you such a huge amount of time because you're always going to get a, uh, a good fit on the notch first time um, you can do this pretty easily without a tube notcher, just with an angle grinder. I've done a video on how to do that, which I'll link in the description if you do want to just do it with a grinder. If you're just doing like a couple of pieces, one off, you don't want to buy a notcher, then um, watch that video, it'll show you how to do it. So I'll just talk a bit about prepping the uh, pieces for welding. So if you just come straight off your notcher, straight onto that tube, and just weld around the tube. If you just catch the very edge of that piece of tube, it might look fine and the weld will look good, but you've potentially only just caught the very corner of that tube where it's only, you know, half a millimeter thick. So you need to bevel this the full, to the full thickness of the tube to ensure when you weld it, you're welding the full thickness of the tube. So I'll do that now. So, that's what a proper bevel looks like when I say bevel the full width of the tube. That's what I mean. Grind it until you've got a flat, the full thickness of the tube. So now, when I weld around there, you can see there's no way that I could catch just a thin edge of that. And also it gives you a, it gives you a much better groove to sink your weld into. The other thing is, you wanna make sure there's no oil and grease on anything. Clean out the inside as well, because some of this tube this stuff's pretty clean. Some of the tube you get has uh, loads of oil and grease and stuff inside it from where they manufacture it. So when you're welding, if you're welding with a piece that's like that, putting a load of heat into it, this heat, the tube heats up and then you're gonna get oil and grease that will run down inside the tube into your weld and contaminate your weld as you're doing it. So that's uh, something to think about. So. That's pretty much it for the basic prep. Uh, we're going to tack it now. I'm welding this with MIG. The same sort of uh, things apply for TIG or even if you're going to stick weld it. I'm using MIG. So when it comes to tacking it, I'll try and keep my tacks really small so that I can weld over the top of the tacks. What you don't want to do is do really big tacks and then weld in between the tacks. If you can weld over the top of your tacks, you'll get a much more uniform looking finish. And it's also better because I'm sure in the past you would have tacked something thinking you got a really good tack on it and then it's just pinged off. So you don't want to rely on the fact that your tack is, is a finished part of your weld by welding up to it and then on from it. You want to just keep your tack small and then just weld straight over the top of it or even grind them out and, uh, and uh, run, run a complete weld all the way around. Little tip if you're wanting to get a nice small little tack or the start to be really clean, just snip the end of your welding wire off before you start. So when it comes to uh, obviously lining things up like this, this is something you, you might come across if you're welding a door bar or putting an X in, you're 
cross brace or something. Um, you want to make sure these are uh, dead, dead in line where they cross over. There's nothing worse than when you see like a join that's like not in line because I think it really just draws your eye to it. So uh, I've seen people make all sorts of contraptions for clamping clamping things to make sure you've got a dead straight line but to be honest all I ever do is just put a straight edge along the bottom and then just eyeball it so I've got three tacks on it small enough to where I can just weld straight over that without having to worry about um, grinding them down. So when it comes to the welding, if you are doing a bit of practice because you want to get into building roll cages, it's absolutely pointless to put this on the bench and weld around it. It's because when you try to do this in a car, it's going to be at some really awkward position. You're going to go from trying to do something where you're all comfortable doing it to bent over backwards trying to do it upside down. If you have a vise, put it in a vise and weld it without taking it out of the vise. Obviously that is still going to be a lot easier to get to than um, it's going to be in a car. But you're going to have to move around, you're going to be doing bits upside down. The other thing that you want to get into a habit of doing is doing a practice run around the tube and uh, what that will do is if you're inside a car in a tight space you might find that your elbows hit on something or that you you can't get your head where it needs to be to see the weld. Doing a, a little test run is always uh, it's just a good habit to get into. I wouldn't be too worried about trying to get like the full half of the tube done in one pass and then the other half of the tube done in the other pass. What I would more focus on would be making sure you can see where the puddle is going as you're welding around the tube. So if that means you've got to stop and reposition yourself, uh, then I would say that's a better option than trying to get all the way around a tube and blocking your line of sight with the torch and just kind of guessing where it's going. So if it takes you four passes to get all the way around but you're you've got a really clear line of sight of where the weld is going, it's going to be a much better way of doing it in my opinion. One other thing is obviously the ideal situation would be that you would keep the torch, you know, I would aim for, for like trying to get a, a 90 degree angle to the weld you're doing as you're going around. So you're going to move around like that, come back down, move around like this as you're going around it. But if this is a roll cage and you're doing it in a car, you will run into a situation where you're up against something. So this is up against a piece of the car. So it, you can't get the torch in to get that perfect torch angle. And with doing this stuff, that's just something you're going to come up against and you just have to work around it. You can't always get the perfect torch angle or, you know, things just aren't always perfect. So if you come up against that where, you know, it's, it's fine around here and then you find that you've got a really like tight gap to get it into the back here, then you want to start the weld in a position where everything is as it should be and you want to try and push that weld into the tight corner where then your torch isn't at the perfect angle. So, so if I've got something here and it's tight and I can't get the torch in because I'm here in the car, start here and then push the weld down into this corner. Don't try to start it in the, the bad position because it's much easier to push a weld into where you want it to go than it is to try and start one in a in an out of reach position. I've done a whole a whole video on uh, you know getting welds into tight corners when you're doing roll cages. So I'll put a link to that video in the description as well. You know, accept the fact that sometimes you've just got to do what you got to do 
to get it done. It's not always going to be this perfect, like, you know, I'm going to push it in this position and uh, I'm never going to travel downwards, I'm never going to travel upwards. You know, you're going to be traveling all directions. You're welding around a piece of tube in an awkward position, so get over it and just, uh, and just get it done. There's, uh, you know, there's so much information of, about, like, the correct way to do this or that, but when you come to, like, real world stuff, it doesn't always apply. You have to bend the rules a little bit to get things done. When it comes to the welding, there's kind of two, two sort of ways of doing it with MIG. There's like a, bit, a rippled bead where it looks like, you know, a stacked dime sort of look. Or there's, you can just run an, obviously a continuous flat uh, weld. I'm not going to say one's better than the other. I do both. It's actually easier to put a bit of a ripple in it because you can sort of walk your way around as you're doing it. And it gives you a little bit of kind of rhythm uh, and you can, you can edge your way around the tube to do a really smooth, perfect weld. You have to have a really robotic um, movement of your hand to get it to look good. So I would say it's actually more difficult to do a, uh, a smooth, flat weld than it is to put those kind of dime movements in it. And when I do it, all I'm doing is I'm just moving forward slightly and pausing. I'm not doing any of this like drawing the ease. Uh, I'm just literally doing a quick pause and then moving on. So there's a few uh, tips for doing like this kind of work. It's always good to have a bit of practice. I actually need a bit of practice doing this. It's been quite a while since I've done a roll cage. Um, but it's one of those things. It's, uh, it's like muscle memory of going around the tube. The more you do, the easier it gets. The more you get used to that motion of, uh, of welding around a piece of tube. It is difficult to do. Um, but it's something that obviously if you're doing a whole roll cage uh, then you're going to get uh, pretty good at it by the time you've probably finished just doing one of them. So I'll put a link to a video for notching the tubes without a notcher. I've got a link for a video for getting welds into tight corners and spaces and I'll also put a link to the video which shows how to actually bend and measure up. Uh, use a tube bender, that kind of thing. I'll put that one in there as well. If, if roll cage fabrication is something that you're interested in getting into, then you'll probably find all those uh, videos helpful. That's it for this one. Cheers for watching. See you on the next one.